Is it possible to win games with a deck that only has ultra rares? You're probably thinking, yeah, that'd be easy. Ultra rares are the most busted cards in the game. Well, you might be surprised since a lot of ultra rares require lower rarity cards to work. But just to make sure this challenge isn't too easy, we're not allowed to have any duplicates and our deck has to be completely filled to the maximum of 60 cards. Can we still win ranked games with this ludicrous deck? Well, let's find out. Game one. Ah, oh, what a fine hand of cards. Of course, any combination of cards from this deck would be good. They are all ultra rares after all. Our opponent sets some cards, but before they end their turn, we can put on our best Zane impression and throw away our deck to summon Gizmek Orochi. Ultra rares might be expensive for you plebeians, but they're nothing to someone like me. Ah yes, Reborn the Monster. Well, now to throw away more cards to destroy their meager monster and summon BLS. Next, we can trigger their Ashizu card, and they choose to shuffle our Fairy Tale Snow back into the deck. Why didn't they shuffle back any other cards? I don't deign to comprehend the minds of the poor. Now I can bury my private jet, and they bounce our soldier to buy themselves one more turn. Attack over their monster, summon the jet, and they dare to banish one of our dragons. So I reply with a swift, no thank you, and pass the turn back. Unfortunately, I can't stop them from banishing our blue eyes in grave, and they super poly for a mud dragon and remove our jet. They try to perform some of their impoverished shenanigans, but we can shuffle away their fusion targets in response. They summon a thief, and we can defend ourselves by banishing more cards from our deck. What? My monster's attack is still decreased? Their vile trickery knows no bounds. We draw another beautiful ultra rare and summon BLS to threaten their Zeus. They activate in response, but we can bring out our soldier for the third time before they finally recognize my superiority and take their leave. Game 2. My opponent chooses to squander their first turn and... Ugh, insects! It's disgusting what the peasants are resorting to these days. I try to summon my private jet, but they show me a misbehaving toddler. They should really hire some kind of help to take care of their children, so I'm forced to end my turn. They banish our own child, summon some monsters, and deal some modest damage before ending their turn. We can bury a couple dragons and activate the card Lullaby of Obedience, because if there's anything I know how to do, it's taking from those less fortunate. <laughs> so let's summon their own Magnum Hut, crash it into their monster, and summon our private jet to clean up their field. They seem to have some dragon synergies, so let's declare that all monsters are now zombies and ironically search for a dragon before passing turn. But they play evenly matched to remove the field spell and end their turn without doing much. Over the next few turns, I get them down to a meager 300 life points, but like the worm they are, they synchro summon Berserker. Luckily, we of course have all the answers and can summon our jet before finishing them off. Game 3. What peasant strategy are we up against next? A level 2? Well, let's activate our Woman of the Cloth to gain life points for every monster they special summon. Now we can just sit back, relax, and enjoy being served. Ah, uh, nearly 20,000 life points. This is the life. Points. Now that it's our turn, they bounce Orochi back to hand, but we can just throw away more of our inexpensive cards to summon it again, which gets their monster negate. Now we can play around that vampire counter trap by summoning Honest and attacking over their only vampire monster. Oh my goodness, this accent is going all over the place. Now we can set Reborn the monster and activate the Cryptid, which discards Kelbeck and gets their Ash Blossom. Well, we might as well steal one of their monsters, gain even more life points, and synchro summon Bron de Fleur. Ah, uh, one of the many languages I was taught by my private tutors. Now to destroy the elf and return my honesty before allowing my opponent to surrender the game. Game 4. Sprite again, I see. I personally prefer the dew from the legendary mountain, Wanahukalugi. I've allowed this to go on long enough, though, so here, take this rock and end your turn, thank you. Let's play Lullaby of Obedience once again, because I am very rich and I take from the poor. I have bags of money and I simply want more. Man, if you know what that's a parody of, you're a real one. 
To recap, it appears that I displayed my wealth and passed back to my opponent. But they dare to banish my dark magic teacher to search one of their dragons before taking their turn. What? What is this card? I've never heard of it, though I suppose commoners must get creative when they can't simply purchase the best cards. How quaint. They summon a queen, but seeing as I am the only member of high society here with any value, let's destroy their low-class royalty in response. They managed to destroy part of my garden, but luckily I practice falconry on the weekends and can summon my pet, Reginald von Austringer. He's unaffected by card effects, you know. My opponent attempts, uh, something or other, but it of course has no effect. Change of Heart, the perfect card to coerce my monsters over to my point of view. You may be wondering why I didn't take something better than this sprite blue fellow. Well, I'm only familiar with ultra-rare cards, you know, and I wanted to communicate that the rest of his deck simply wasn't worth playing. Now we need only attack for the next few turns to secure victory. I haven't yet tired of victory, show the next game! Game 5. Our opponent doesn't do very much, so I'm able to summon one of our many entertainers and negate their summoning the Dark Magician. Let's refresh our hand. Excellent, my gardener has arrived. Trim the hedges, please, and do fetch my private jet while you're at it. Why can't I attack? Oh, of course. Our entertainer restricts us to only attacking with zombie monsters. How tedious, but very well. This commoner searches for a trap card of some kind and tries to assault my entertainer. Well, I can summon Fairy Tale Snow to protect him. Now, as you know, every card in this deck is a fine draw. It's really no matter. We can still go on the offensive. They summon their magician and attempt to banish my jet, but we of course have the answer with this royal rare card. Truly a card befitting someone of my stature. We can return their card to their hand and wipe their board clean before summoning Berserker and ending our turn. Everything is clearly in control. Ha! See? We can banish their monster and they can't do anything. Now we just need to draw one of our many options. It's okay, the deck is working perfectly well. I can still summon my private music tutor to remove their pesky trap card and... They banished him? How will I learn Beethoven's 19th Sonata before my mother returns from her 16-week stay in Croatia? Oh, no, I, I mean, this is all part of my plan, of course. Lull them into a false sense of- Ooh! How dare you- Well, I can at least summon Snow back to defend me. As long as this last draw is- Yes, yes, perfect, of course. This deck always functions at maximum efficiency. So, uh, how far did this masterpiece of a deck get us? Well, I remember it like it was just yesterday. We're almost there. One more win. To Diamond. With this ridiculous deck. Up against Scareclaw. Okay. So let's go ahead and trigger this. We'll go Change of Heart. Okay. Yep, that is absolutely gonna get the negation. That's fine. And then, what I'm gonna do... Yep. Let's go ahead and activate. Target Baguska becomes dark. Activate. Pay 2000. Super poly. Imperm. No Imperm. Okay. Garura. Zombie world. Changing them to, to zombies and then super poly for, <laughs> for Garura is pretty huge. That's awesome. Yeah, so they have to go for that, and now we can Keldo. Yeah. Do we win? I think we just go for game. Let's go Eldlich. Barone, we actually get a draw here. Destroy you. And we have negation. And we go Eldlich. Is this game? Is this game? Is this diamond? Did we get into diamond? Oh, why? Why can't he attack? Five minutes later. Oh, only- Oh, Unizombie. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess I should have sent uh, Ballard Rock to the graveyard. Only- Only zombie monsters are allowed to attack the turn that you use Unizombie's effect. Okay. But that's okay, we have negation. 
Um, if only we had a <laughs> Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, then we'd be able to just kill here, but that's fine. That's fine. We have negation. And their face down is clearly nothing, and we have a hand trap. So You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's okay. I'm gonna say that's okay. And Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chill. If their monster leaves the field, we win the game. Because they take damage equal to their attack. So we're just gonna go straight to battle. And we're gonna swing in with Eldlich. Oh my goodness, that's diamond! <laughs> we got to diamond with only ultra rares. Here it is. Yes! <laughs> oh man. I know master rank is a thing now, so it's not as big a deal as it used to be, but like... That's hilarious. You have to admit, that is, that is some funny stuff right there. Only Ultra Rares is a diamond tier deck, apparently. <laughs> oh, only Ultra Rares is a diamond tier deck, you guys. There you go. <laughs> That's right, a deck full of only one copy of each Ultra Rare <laughs> was able to get us all the way to diamond. I actually have a lot more footage of this deck, so if you want to see more, you can let me know by hitting that like button and leaving a comment. But I have one more game to show off. Bonus game! Ah, Eldlich the Golden Lord, you meager peasants may have spirits like Winged Karibo or Jerry the Bean Man, but my spirit monster is money. The Winged Dragon of Raw? Yet another golden monster that I'm quite fond of, though it is hardly befitting a commoner such as yourself. I have some business to attend to first, so let's draw some cards and then play Lullaby of Obedience again, and declare Sphere Mode to steal away my opponent's monster. You dare oppose me? I think not. Now let's activate their Sphere Mode to summon our own Winged Dragon of Ra. Yes, it's far more suitable for someone of my status and renown. My underhanded foe sets some cards and ends their turn after searching a second copy of Ra. Do they not know that having multiple copies of a card devalues its worth? Well, now that it's my turn again, I can pay life points so Ra can destroy his face down, but they activate Skill Drain, a super rare, to stop my assault. Truly, there are no depths to which these commoners won't sink. Of course, it doesn't matter, because our Golden Lord is able to remove their trap. Now we can remove their last card with the Golden Egyptian God, summon the Golden Lord, and defeat this evildoer with the best strategy of all time. Money. Well, that's going to be it for this video. <coughs> That's gonna be it for this video. If you liked it, maybe check out the last Silly Strats episode where we defeated our opponents with Exodia Sword Soul. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next one. Yes, money.